under 21 side as well. So, chaps, Nigel Pearson, Troy Deeney, where does that leave the promotion race? Uh, as wide open as we thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> that we know nothing about it. Yeah, absolutely. probably. No, I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a pivotal weekend. Obviously, the, the games come quick and fast uh, this weekend. So, who can really recover, rest and go again? I think with the likes of Leeds, they've got a great squad that can do it again. Uh, Ipswich a little bit more difficult because, again, they, they don't have to squad depth. But, um, no, I think it's, it's a really interesting one for, for us as, as pundits to, to watch and try and analyse and try and figure it out. But <laughs> what we've shown so far is we ain't got a clue, have we, go? <laughs> <laughs> but what's, so what's the key thing today, then, Nigel? You've got Enzo Moresco, Kieran McKenna yeah. and Daniel Farker there re reacting off the back of what they've seen today. A yeah. couple of days rest, back at it again on Monday. How quickly do each of them need to box off the varying stages of emotion, either a bit of euphoria, a bit of uh, dejection and frustration? Yes, I mean, you hear people talking a lot about trying to keep on an even keel mm. in terms of emotionally, which is something that people talk a lot about these days, but probably don't do enough about it mm. in practice. It's, it's something which is, uh, this stage of the season is about being able to keep your composure, but also to perform. Mm -hmm. What you don't want is, is players to all of a sudden be um, fearing the challenge. That's the bottom line. The, the, the teams that deal best with pressure will find the success and when I say success whether that's in a promotion race or in a relegation battle mm -hmm. the, the, the same things apply the, the qualities of being able to continue to perform as well as you can under pressure become absolutely paramount so I mean today um, I would have to say that watching that game Leeds have underperformed to a certain extent they've looked vulnerable when uh, Players are running at pace at them, you know. So, so the goals that have been scored have been great goals to to watch. But from a defensive point of view, there is some, you know, both sides have uh, have struggled at, at certain points. It, it it leads on to what will be a fascinating end to the to the season. And I think there's there's lots of teams still in the championship that have got plenty to play for. Very well summed up there by Nigel. And of course, it's been a decent couple of games in charge for Tom Cleverley. A win against Birmingham, a draw today against Leeds United. A man that these two know very, very well indeed. But let's get his thoughts now with Jonathan Oakes. Tom, how do you regard a point out of that in the end? Yeah, I'm, I'm obviously a little bit disappointed when you lead twice. Um, thought we had some good chances to go 2 0 up at the time. Um, but I'm really pleased with how we, we performed. We, we carried out our game plan. We. I thought dominated and controlled for large parts, uh, but they're the league leaders for a reason. They have real quality in Somerville and and some some players off their bench. Um, and yeah, it's it was a good game of football, and, and I'm still pleased with the point. You took the game to them. You said before the game that you thought that your forward players could cause Leeds problems, and, and that certainly proved to be the case, didn't it? Yeah, it was fantastic. You know, I thought with and without the ball, they, they worked their socks off. Showed real quality in the uh, in the final actions with goals from both strikers, mm. uh, and on another day it could have been two or three, and coming in at half time with a bit more co convincing lead. But um, in the end, you know, I'm really proud of the players, and, and a draw might have been a fair result. Emmanuel Dennis scored a great goal. Do you think it affected your impetus when he came off there? Yeah, Dennis is he's nursing a, a small groin issue, so we'll have to be careful with his minutes over the next uh, over the busy period. Um, but yeah, he was explosive. He was dynamic tonight. He looked dangerous. He competes. He's he's got he's got a full package. Um, so he's uh, I was really pleased with his performance tonight. Do you think you should have had a penalty in the first half, challenged by Ethan Ampadu on Yasser Espria? I've not seen that one back, to be honest. Um, I think in one of my first interviews, I don't need to get myself in any trouble. <laughs> you thought it was at the time. Your initial reaction, what was the, that, that it was, wasn't it? Yeah, it, lo it looked like he's gone through the back of him. I mean, I've not seen it back. Mm. We, we had word in our ears that it was a stonewaller, but um, that was a bias. A bias <laughs> I won't push you any further on that then. How about four points from your opening two games? How do you assess the points return you've got so far and the performances from the players? You must be encouraged. Yeah, I mean, I said to the players before, physically we're in great shape. Uh, technically, it's a talented group of players. And now mentally, if we can show the same fight, desire we did at Birmingham, we have done tonight, and, and concentration for 95 minutes, mm -hmm. I think this team this team has got a high, high ceiling. So, um, really pleased. How much did you enjoy managing this team at Vicarage Road for the first time? 
Yeah, I mean, you don't get too much time to soak soak it up and, and enjoy it. Uh, obviously, at the full-time whistle, it's really nice to get the reception. And I didn't think it'd be uh, this soon sort of performing in front of a, a packed-out Vic and in front of the Rookery um, again. But, no, I've been... I've been lucky to, to be in this position again so quickly. You don't get long to, to dwell on it, a quick turnaround for another game on Monday. Yeah, uh, and West Brom will be a tough opponent, you know, that we, we really respect what they're doing, very well coached, organised team, um, and then and then straight into Preston after that, but yeah, players will turn around, dust themselves off, um, take heart from this performance and, and go again Monday. Thanks Tom. Cheers. I've not had chance to see it back. Two games in and he's absolutely <laughs> nailed it, hasn't he, Tom Cleverley? Not seeing that Ethan Ampadu challenge on Yasser Esprit. We don't think it was a penalty, so it's fine. Um, he did. looks the part. <laughs> OK. okay. Sort you've of. It sort of. And you've seen them given, as you said. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, looks the part, sounds the part. His team looked the part in the first half. What's your thoughts on what you've heard from Tom there? Tom is the part. He's well educated. He comes from a great school, obviously with Man United, England, uh, Team GB, doing the Olympics. He mm. knows how to say the right things, and he knows what top-level performances look like. He's he knows the players as well, which is always a great help, as he as he alluded to before the game. But they look they look organised, which is in this league it's the biggest thing to be is organised, fit, and they've got talent. Mm. Um, the frustration for for Clebs would be that, like I said earlier, if he could keep. Denny Sainz mm. just said he's, he's nursing a groin injury, but if you could keep that player with that X factor on, they'd mm -hmm. probably go on to win that game because Leeds were, were struggling. But um, you know he'll be happy. Two games in, undefeated, rolling into another game on Monday, and like he said, he won't really appreciate it now. But mm. probably when he gets home, the fan appreciation, sitting down with his, missing his kids, he'll go, "Oh, that was a good day, that," and he'll, he'll enjoy it. Good day off the back of a good first half as well. Bakun Bayou was the man that got the game up and running for Watford. And again, a sign that potentially, mm. as Troy's saying, they've got some players that can really hurt the opposition. Now, I suppose the frustration from a Watford point of view, Nigel, is they've not seen enough of this over yeah. the course of the season, have they? Yeah, I mean, look, it, it's every manager or coach, whatever you want to, you know, whatever the job title is, has a different way of playing. But the, the bottom line is, you have to appreciate what you have mm. and it's about getting the best out of the players. So if you've got players who are uh, fast, powerful, mm. you know, mm -hmm. try and utilise it. it. You know, People talk about possession football. Mm. Yeah, it, it's all right if you like possession football, but if your players are suited towards being um, pretty hard to, to deal with on mm. the counter, then give them the opportunity to do that more often. And I think, look, Watford today were brave. Mm. They they didn't they didn't sit back and they didn't want to give Leeds the initiative. And I did think did they sense danger though? You've seen the uh, Somerville chance just then after yeah. 15 minutes. He does what he does so many times this season, cutting in on his right from yes. a defensive point of view. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. But but look, sometimes defenders don't like to get themselves isolated. Mm -hmm. The the problem is when you're playing against players like that, you've got to stop them from turning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, the, the, the key to it is you've got to get tight at the right time. Once you, once you allow a player like that who's a dribbler and has a great turn of pace to, to get you backpedalling, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. And that has happened there. A couple I mean, of suggestions yeah, offside we've, as well, yeah, trying to build Of up. course, but I think for, for young Ryan Andrews, this is, a, this is a, an acid test for him. He's had a lot of really good games. He's mm. obviously gone with England. He's done really well this season. It is his first season. He's coming up against Premier League quality there mm. in, in Somerville. And today, you know, individually, he's had a tough day. Mm -hmm. Yes, Somerville scored, but there was, especially in the second half, because he got mm. ran the first time, mm. started to overcover, and he got into a lot of trouble. But this, again, as we said the earlier... A player that frustrates and thrills you in equal measure. I, I love Dennis. I, I played with Emmanuel, but the, for the amount of talent this boy has, he has to do more. Mm -hmm. There's a reason he scored a hat-trick against uh, Real Madrid in the Champions League. He's, not, he's no mug by any stretch of the imagination. But if he's nursing a groin injury, mm -hmm. I've been there and we, we spoke about it off camera. The gaffer was looking after me in games with my knees hanging off. The gaffer should be looking after you, not going down after five minutes mm -hmm. and going, right, that's enough. I've scored, mm -hmm. I've got my goal. This team needs someone like him to really push on. They've got young players like Espria who are there and they need to do more. And, you know, the, 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 the goal here from Leeds is great. But again, I think it, this is where I was talking about Andrews just being a little bit 
naive mm. uh, and a little bit green in terms of, look, now he's, he's been around a couple of times, he's tried to get close, but he overcovers, he shows him the line, and because he is quick, but when you're coming up against players who are just as quick, mm -hmm. that happens, they get past you, you can't get back. And it's a bit fortunate from, from a Leeds point of view, but, but they won't really care. When he was asked after the game, wasn't it? Jonathan Oakes saying to Matteo Joseph about not necessarily being a thing of beauty, as every classic goal scorer says. They're the best Madden, ones. As long as it They're goes the into ones, goal, yeah. doesn't remotely care. And this felt a bit like the start of the Alamo, didn't it, Nigel, for the last five or ten minutes? Yeah. Because then Jaden Anthony had a wonderful chance yeah. to seal a proper comeback for Leeds. Yeah, the, look, the, when you decide that you're going to defend as deep as Watford did, you know, you've got to be careful that you don't invite unnecessary pressure mm, and look that's it. a fantastic season mm, yeah. um, but look we've also got to recognize that Leeds have really good players mm, absolutely uh, and they they had to awaken at some point mm -hmm. what I would say is mm. that, that Watford still defended with an awful lot of spirit so and give, t give, give Tom credit for that as well yeah. because no no win at home since November for him to come in and get that type of performance is a really good Leeds team. That shows he's got the boys on side yeah. and they'll only grow from that, won't they? I'm looking forward to seeing some grey hairs on his head, though. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be long before they come. They do come in due course, they, don't they? Oh, you can set the sofa, it's a bit more relaxed on it, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it's well, Daniel, is that a point gained or two points dropped? No, definitely a really good, really good point uh, for us. Difficult game away from uh, from home. We played them at the worst possible uh, moment. It's always the same. A eh? new manager, bit of fresh air. Then also former teammate. He gives them confidence. They they feel a bit unleashed. They have quality, individual quality, and they enjoy uh, first time since a while. Positivity in the home stadium are celebrated, and everything works for them. And for us. Didn't want to speak about this too much before the uh, before the game because didn't want to send the wrong uh, wrong messages. But we had the worst possible um, international break. F three players come back uh, injured. We had horrendous outcome. 120 minutes just two days uh, ago for four of my players. Junior Filpo played Wednesday morning. It was simply not possible for him to to play. Uh, Jorginho Rutter seven days ago or nine days ago uh, a surgery. Also, some other players on the pitch, like Liam Cooper. I'm always hoping that he plays uh, for Scotland, but not two, two and a half days ago, 90 minutes um, in with his injury CV. So we had not one training session uh, together together with the lads. Um, we had till Wednesday just uh, six uh, first team players together, and then to play this game so difficult and to show such a second half was definitely not our best football game. But yeah. we showed steel, we showed mentality. So happy and, and pretty, pretty proud of the lads and it's a really good point for us. Do you think all that explains why you started this game so sluggishly? Yes, of course. Uh, if we, uh, if training would be important, we would just show off, uh, up for the games and everyone is always available. We haven't trained together with the lads uh, since, uh, since two weeks and uh, Junior played whatever Wednesday morning in uh, South America and uh, the, the, the Welsh lads was such a disappointment, one at 20 minutes, so it's so difficult. Yeah, they play for different nationalities who play at completely different football that we want, want to do. So again, you can't uh, speak about this before the game, but after the game, uh, it's definitely the, uh, the right message that this is a really, really priceless and really good point also to equalize that late, to be so dominant in the second half and, and to show such a unity togetherness. I'm pretty happy and uh, proud of the boys today. Your change has made a big difference when you put Junior Firpo on and, and several players shifted position. Do you wish that you could have started like that with your original lineup? Any regrets that you weren't able to do that? Yes, I would have liked to have uh, really gone to a red hot form, uh, yeah, Groove in, in red hot form, uh, Georgie without uh, his surgery. Uh, Junior Firpo would have uh, liked if he wouldn't have played on Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm completely different time zone, nine hours flight, uh, flight back, just arrived uh, yesterday after nine hours flight without sleep, was simply not possible to, to start him because we also have to think about the, the upcoming games. But um, yeah, nevertheless, I'm, I'm proud also of lads who were involved in the, even in the, in the first half because we, we need all the players and big, big compliments uh, to, to the lads. This is exactly the spirit that you need, never know when, you, when you're beaten. And if there is a day when you can beat us, uh, it was definitely today, uh, but we sh sh uh, still uh, gained, gained one point. It's a massive point. I'm pretty, pretty pleased.
There were mixed results for your rivals today with Ipswich winning, Leicester losing and Southampton drawing. How do you see the race now? Yes, it's a championship. It's relentless. For, for each and every team, it's, it's difficult. The first game after the international break and, and each and every game is, is a challenge and, and not easy. We can't influence other results. We're just concentrated. We had so many challenges and problems uh, tonight. We're just focused on our game. And again, if, if we are there with good performances, today was definitely not our best football performance, but uh, uh, we still found a way to grind out a, a good result here at, at Watford under the circumstances. I'm pretty pleased, and if we do this further on, then we have also a good chance to finish in a really good position. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you. Pretty pleased with the point at the end of the day, given the context, of course, that Daniel Farker puts in. And it's a reflection, really, on what Leeds United are. It's a big club stacked to the rafters with international footballers. It's part of the job, the remit, mm -hmm. Nigel, with a successful club to manage internationals that are all over the globe. So yes. off the back of that context that he spells out so convincingly, well, is it a good point? Yes, mm -hmm. ultimately. Um, he's happy with it, I mm -hmm. think. <laughs> <laughs> Having heard him, uh, I like him. He's a, he's, a, he's a good, good manager. And I think what also comes across, he's relieved to get through today mm -hmm. without picking up any further problems. I, I think clearly for him he was concerned about uh, some of his players. It's interesting to hear uh, managers of different clubs give a different take on it. And and the, the demeanour of the leader, if mm -hmm. you like, will have a, a big impact on the players in the running. And um, so I think he's a type of manager that gives players confidence. Mm -hmm. Um, you can see at the end his, he has a good connection with his players and uh, it's safe to say after that interview that he's pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty pleased, pretty happy. And still unbeaten in 2024 yeah. mm -hmm. in the league, Troy. And the man that has that type of perspective and knows how to get over the line, again, the demeanour that Nigel talks about, mm -hmm. reflected in the team, do you feel, going into what will be another big game on Monday? Yeah, he's obviously got to keep them upbeat. The turnaround is really quick. I think, you know, when you've had international players and they do come back late, it is one of those ones where you you go, do I get my best players out mm -hmm. when we saw with Ipswich with uh, Kieran McKenna going, right, keep them all played Wednesday. Let me just get him on mm -hmm. and see what he can give us. Um, obviously, Daniel's decided to go the other way. But I think fundamentally for Leeds, it's about getting through this unscathed. Now, mm -hmm. just keep knocking out uh, points any kind of win, any kind of draw, just don't lose because the other, other guys aren't going to let themselves yeah. down, are they? They're going to keep going and you've just got to match that mm. pace and then hopefully one of them slips up and you're able to just <laughs> kick yeah. on and, and, and you win it. And, yeah. you know, when we got promoted uh, a few years back, we was, we was third. We win the game uh, away at Brighton on Sky. Mm -hmm. By the time we get home, we're promoted. Mm -hmm. We was third. It's about, oh, what happened? The other teams lose, you win. Jobs are good, and that's all they want at the end. At the end of the day, it's about getting promoted, and that's all they want. Mm. That's the key thing, of course. Ipswich Town, as Troy mentioned earlier on, did their business at Blackburn Rovers. And Kieran McKenna spoke after that game to Juliet Ferrins. Say if you're in that position, you've only got seven games remaining. Um, the position that you find yourself right now is top of the championship. But I know you're going to say you take it game by game. But what can that do going into the next match against Southampton? No, honestly, that, that bit of it, no no difference at all. Of course, three points is welcome. Um, away from home, every three points in the championship is, is hard fought and hard won. So three points again is, is fantastic. Um, sets us up well going into another great game to look forward to on Monday, and, and that's only where our focus will be. Yeah, but do you look? You must look, surely, because you, you must look to see what, what you need to do. No, we don't know what we need to do. The reality is it's, um, you know, I think we've got 84 points in some seasons. That would probably be enough to you know, be, be headed off to the beach pretty soon. But it's, it's certainly not going to be this year. The, the competition is fantastic. The level of the teams is fantastic. And whoever, you know, is going to finish in those top positions is going to need, I think, an incredible points total. So there's no point speculating about what we might need. We just need to try and perform as well as we can every game, pick as many points up as, as we can and, um, you know, see where we are at the end. And you go again? And we go again, yeah. It's Easter weekend. So it's, um, you know, Friday, Monday, quick recovery time. And... Uh, you know, it's a period to enjoy. We've got five games in 15 days. Um, everyone's looking forward to each game, and let's, let's bring it on. Brilliant stuff. Safe journey back. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks a lot. It certainly is something to be enjoyed. Kieran McKenna, thank you very much for the plug. This is what we've got with the top four 
in their respective race for promotion. A couple of those teams, of course, that Nigel knows very, very well. Ipswich currently top, Leeds second, Leicester third. Southampton, a bit of a gap there between themselves and the third place team at Leicester City. I'm going to steal Troy Deeney's question to his former boss as we were watching Kieran McKenna there. Is it better to be in the lead or to be chasing someone down? <laughs> I'd rather have the points mm -hmm. and be ahead because, you know, it, it's about being um, just trying to stay in control of your own destiny. Mm -hmm. That's the big thing. What you can't do is you, you, you can't second guess. And today has been a really good example mm -hmm. of results that we probably didn't expect. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, if, if, we, if we make the assumption that, well, you should win that game and that one's going to be... It doesn't really work like that. The mm. championship is still remains the the hardest second league in the world. Mm. Mm. The, the the level of competitive um, games or, or it, it it is re it is relentless. We've mm. heard we've heard every manager say that today. Um, and you've got to be able to make sure that you've got to take care of your own performances and you've got to make sure that your your own players are confident that they can do what they're good at. Mm -hmm. And it's as simple as that. Um, because you will play some sides who are better than you, mm -hmm. but they can, have a, they can have a difficult day. And if they have a difficult day, you've got to be able to capitalise on it. Um, so it's, look, it, it just remains one of those where if you're in front, stay in front. Mm -hmm. Give everybody below you problems. And, and for me, that's the... The, the best way to go about it. <laughs> Don't worry about what other people are doing. That's the key to it. And us sat here, it's been wonderful to spend all afternoon with you, gents. But, Troy, do you get that that itch, that sense that everyone's career comes and goes? But when you're mm -hmm. watching that, you're thinking, my God, I wish I was still involved. Uh, no, not really, no. Not really. I, I enjoy it. I can, I don't. <laughs> That's because we're such don't. good company. Do you know why I don't? Because I feel like you, you, everyone has their time, right? Yeah, so yeah, I've had... I had wonderful times in these um, these weekends scoring. We, I remember we played against Middlesbrough, scored, mm -hmm. broke the record on Easter weekend. It was great. Playoff, semi-finals. I did all right against someone, <laughs> yeah. But you, you have your time, you have your moments, mm. and, and I've been fortunate enough to have moments. So, you know, if that call comes, I'm ready. If it doesn't come, mm -hmm. I'm ready. I, I, I'm here with you. Where else would I want to be? Exactly. You know what I mean? I'm still waiting for my time to come. Anyway, <laughs> gents, it's been a pleasure to see you pleasure both. More <laughs> live action coming your way. A bit of boxing as well if you fancy staying up a little bit later. Oscar Valdez taking on Liam Wilson. That's 1am on Sky Sports. عن طريق المدربين الرياضيين هل ريسكاتي كلها ان انا مشكلتي اني اشيل المدرب او اجيب لاعب غالي كان دايما يقول لك مالك كان كان اسمها ايه اير اسيا اير اسيا بتاعه الطيران لما بعد كده اشترى كان فيرونتينا اعتقد ولا كان نادي ايه في ايطاليا كان بيتكلم عن بيقول لك اداره شركه الطيران اسهل بكتير من اداره نادي في في, في انجلترا كان لا اشترى نادي في انجلترا من الاسبرا باين ولا مش فاكر بصراحه المعلومه لان بيقول لك في الشركه الموضوع عندي كنترول ان انا عارف بشتري ايه وبكسب ايه وبخسر ايه لكن بيقول لك انا بعمل كل التفاصيل وانا بشتري النادي وفي الاخر بيقرر مدرب و11 لاعب مصير كل اللي انا عملته يا في الاخر الجمهور يقلب عليا ويقول لك انت فاشل ومشروعك فاشل لازم تمشي لازم تجيب لي المهاجم الفلاني لازم تجيب لعيب الوسط الفلاني لازم تمشي المدرب لازم تجيب المدرب الفلاني فبيقول لك انا في الاخر كل الكنترول اللي انا كنت بعمله وبحاول اعمله بيضيعوا لي 11 واحد في الملعب يا اما ينجحوا لي 11 واحد في الملعب ده بالظبط حل تشيلسي حاليا ولذلك تاني برجع من 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 كلام سايمون كوبر ده على على مالك هذا النادي واستنتاج الشخصي على ابني 
ودايما هفرض حسن النيه ليهم ان اقبالي وتوت بويلي عندهم النيه الجيده لصنع شيء لتشيلسي ولكن الطقم اللي تحتهم هو اللي فيه الشر هو اللي فيه الرؤيه الخاطئه لتشيلسي هفرض دي ودي وهقول لك يا عم ما هو فعلا انا ستيل عندي مشاكل في 11 لاعب وعندي مشاكل في مدرب ولذلك ديفيد اورنستون مق... يعني ان لاين مع الخبر بتاع ان موريسيو بوتيتشينيو مكمل طلع بخبر ان سيكون صيف مزدحم جدا اتنين عقلياتهم بتلعب مونوبولي احنا هنبيع ونشتري اكتر من تحقيق الانجاز هل تشيلسي محتاج لعيبه بالشكل اللي هو يخليك تقول ان ده صيف مزدحم انا بقسم بالله لا انا اقسم لك بالله لا وعشان ما تبيعش الوهم للجمهور مش هيكون مزدحم انت عندك مشاكل في اللعب النظيف مش هتعرف تشتري زي ما انت فاكر انت صفك المزدحم عبارة انك تبيع خمس لعيبة ده رقم واحد رقم اتنين هل ضمان الصفة المزدحم لو جبت لعيبة انك تنجح مع هذا المدرب مش عايز احلف تاني ان الجمهور عارف انك لو جبت اوزمن استيل عندك نسبة ريسك كبيرة جدا لفشله بص وصلت لايه بص انت وصلت الـ الـ الرؤية بتاعتك لشعار النادي هل انت شايفه برايتون موناكو ولا شايفه تشيلسي بص انت وصلت النادي لايه احنا كنا عارفين اللعيب اللي بيجي يندمج في وسط منظومة تشيلسي بينجح انا دلوقتي هروح اجيب افضل لاعب في افريقيا افضل لاعب في الدوري الايطالي الـ الـ وصيف كأس الامم الافريقية وحطه في تشيلسي ومش ضمن انه ينجح كنت بجيب دروك باسم مش معروف وبص كسر الدنيا معي انت انت متخيل احنا وصلنا لمرحلة ايه في التقزيم بتاع الفريق فانا النهاردة رايح اتكلم على زي الفيديو بتاع الاستاذ بوتيتشينيو لما بيتكلم على توظيف كايسيدو وتوظيف انزو طبعا ده عبث هنبقى نتكلم عليه بالتفصيل يعني واهدار لطاقات الاثنين بجانب اهدار طاقات كايسيدو وطاقات انزو طاقة تشوكوميكا نكونكو مدرك توظيف ديزيسيل غلط توظيف كولويل اللي انا متاكد ان كولويل ده حتى رغم ان انا مش بحبه ممكن يطلع منه حاجات احسن لو مع مدرب تاني مع خطة تاني ويوم ما نيجي نستقر طب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ده الفرقة شابة وعيدة عندها خمسين الف مشكلة نعمل ايه نستقر في التشكيل مفيش استقرار في التشكيل يوم ما نستقر على قلوب الدفاع يوم بالضلين ما نقول يلا تياجو سيلفا بره حط دي ساسيو حط كلول يلعبوا اول مباراه اربعه ورا تاني مباراه يلعبوا ثلاثه ورا طب هم يا ابني مش فاهمين اصلا يعني انا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لازم اثبت يعني لازم اثبت لذلك بشوف ناس مثلا بتهاجم اهو تياجو سيلفا قعد ايه اللي اتحسن في الفرقه ما هي ما تتحسبش كده يا صاحبي ما هي ما تتحسبش كده يا صاحبي لازم تتحسب انا اثبت قد ايه فين هو انا بس احط كلول و ودي سيفا كده الله اللهم صل على النبي كده الدنيا بقت تمام والخطه ثبتت لا مثبتهم في الباكات حواليهم ولا مثبتهم في خطه اربعه ورا ولا انا عارف خطه ثلاثه ورا نفس الفكره يعني مثلا عبد الرحمن طلعت انا اتفرجت على الفيديو التحليل بتاعه بتاع مباراه برينتفورد وهو بيتكلم على فيروس 3 5 2 انا مثلا اختلف مع عبد الرحمن ليه؟ الفكره العيب مش في الخطه يعني العيب مش في الخطه ولا الميزه في الخطه يعني لا مثلا العيب في 3 5 2 ولا ميزه لو لعبت 4 2 3 1 فكره ادوار وتوظيف اللعيبه مش عند اللعيبه ولذلك انا بتفرج على بوتيتشينيو او تشيلسي بوتيتشينيو انا بفقد كل قدرات اللعيبه انا مره بفتي وبشوف مدرك وحش على الشمال طبعا ده بعد سلسال من ان بينتشيل واللي هو اللي بيلعب اصلا جناح ما علينا فحط مدرك صانع لعب بعدين جاكسون عنده مشكلة في الإنهاء، حط لي جاكسون بقى جناح شمال، بعد كده عندي توظيف مشكلة، العب بدي ساسي باك يمين، بعد كده لا كولول باك شمال، بعد كده انزو ورا كايسيدو، بعد كده جاليجر مكان انزو، بعد كده جاليجر قدام وانزو ورا قدام كايسيدو بس مش جنبه. بالمر اتوظف مهاجم وهمي، أنا مفيش لاعب عندي ثبت في أول حاجة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اثبت على أدم تشكيلة. تطلع حتى قدرات اللعيبه، تتعود قدرات اللعيبه انها تطلع. يعقل 27 جوله ما الاقيش لاعب عندي وحد الله مستوى التطور ولا حارس المرمى حتى. انت إيه بتتكلم في ايه؟ انت إيه بتتكلم في بقاء مين؟ ولا صيف ساخن بتاع ايه؟ ولا ده هيفرق ولا ده هيفرق. والعقليه بتاعه الانهزام ليست عقليه بوتيتشينيو فقط. العقليه جايه من اللي فوق بوتيتشينيو. هما باصين لك كانك انت برايتون وموناكو. ولذلك انا بطلع من الريسك بخش في دحديره بطلع من نقره بخش في ريسك 
هروح جرهان بوتر اروح اغير بدل ما اروح اجيب واحد اليت لا ده انا اروح اجيب لامبارد اضيع تلت موسم سمعتي تبقى زي الزفت فيبقى اسوء واحد ممكن يجي لي ويوم ما القدر يبتسم لك ويقول لك تعالى انريكي او نايجل زمان يبقى فرق التوقيت بتاعك يتدخل زي فيلم انتر اه انتر ستيلر بتاع نولان وانا نروح مختارين بوتيتشينيو طب القدر بيديك فرصه تاني ده احنا النتائج ما فيش اوحش من كده ده احنا الاداء ما فيش اوحش من كده ده احنا الروح ما فيش اوحش من كده ده احنا التصريحات ما فيش اوحش من كده ده احنا اللعيبه قيمتها التسويقيه بتقل ما فيش اوحش من كده لا والله العظيم لا انجدد الثقه فيه طب يا عم انت عايز ايه كيف ستنجح وانت بهذه العقليه ازاي هتنجح انت لو انت طالع فرحان بالنقطه قدام برينتفورد لو طالع فرحان بالاداء قدام ليفربول والطاقه اللي خلصت في ال90 دقيقه لو طالع فرحان بالتعادل امام مانشستر سيتي يبقى خلاص انا بحكي في ايه وانت بتحرق دمك في ايه كمشاهد خلاص كده ملهاش لازمه وتطلع من امريم على تشابي على انزاجي على 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 كله ريسكات هل الاثنين اللي موجودين في التعيينات يروحوا يعينوا حد بشخصيه فائزه شخصيه بطوليه شخصيه تحقق انتصار لا هيروح يجيب لك اموريم مثلا مش بقول ان اموريم وحش ولا بتاع بس فاكرين لايف الجمعه اتكلمت لك ان بواش كان كسبان ثلاثيه جه تشيلسي ما عرفش يتعامل مع العقليه دي مدرب متحدي مدرب يعرف يقود ويطلع قدرات من اللعيبه مش انك تروح تجيب كمان لعيبه وانا مش هصرف مليار تاني يا حبيبي عشان اشتغل اجيب بيها المركز الرابع واقول لك والله وزن الخامس السادس اتحسنا عن الموسم اللي فات عايز تتخلص من ما يحدث في تشيلسي تخلص من الاثنين بتوع التعيينات هات عقلية فائزة هات عقلية ما, تقبق... ما تخافش لو جبت لها واحد متحدي ما تخافش لو دخلت في صدام مع مدرب ما تخافش لو قاعدة شغالة وهي تحت الضغط لكن الناس في التعيينات مش حاسين بأي ضغط والله ده احنا معنا وقت الفرقة شابة اصل الفرقة بتتحسن اه المدرب بيتحسن اصل الدنيا تمام وكله بونو لا هو مش كله بونو الحقيقه احنا في وضع وحش والهيريتج او الارث انت من هي... النقطه دي كاس العالم للانديه وبطوله اوروبا انت عمال تبعد عنها كل ما تبعد عنها صديق العزيز كل ما الارث بتاعك بيقل كل ما ال... 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 الديجنيتي والكرامه بتاعتك بتقل كل ما الفرق تهابك وتحس